everyone, my name is Clantis and welcome to the Iron Bars, my true crime YouTube channel. So guys, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So I did a poll on Friday asking you guys if you would like me to go live explaining the topic of this video or I should make a video. So the majority of you voted that I make a video because it's always going to be there to catch up on. However, even with a live, it can still become a video, like it's called a replay, I think. So anyways, we are not there. So I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who participated in the poll. And yes, I listened and here's a video. And also, I want to say thank you so much to everybody that has suggested this topic because some of you have been watching South African true crime videos where you kept hearing the term multi, multi killing, multi murder. Yes, such things do take place in this country, unfortunately. So I am going to touch on that in this video, but everything starts from the root and let's get to the root. So before the white man came to Africa or to South Africa, let me not speak for every other African country. So before a white man came to South Africa by the name of Jan van Riebeck in 1652, black people had their own traditional practices and cultural practices. So black South Africans knew that there was a God or a higher power. However, to get to the higher power, they first need to consult with their ancestors. Basically, the ancestor will become the messenger to the higher power. Hence, black people will have like traditional dues. I'm not sure what they are called in English. I'm just going to say a traditional do by a traditional do what i mean is so in the olden days people used to grow old like as old as 100 years 110 years etc and so forth and it is believed that when the person passes away that person automatically becomes an ancestor in zulu we call that person an ilozi so meaning that when you become ilozi you are now the messenger between the living as well as the higher power so the living will go to your grave and they will talk to you or they will burn an incense which is impepo or sage and we believe as Zulu people that sage it is basically the letter to our ancestors that they take to God about whatever it is that we are praying for so when we pray to our ancestor basically we are sending the ancestor to God and say this is what my child or my whoever is asking for if we are asking for protection or we're going to ask for luck or we're going to ask for a long life we'll ask for healing of somebody that might be ill and basically we go to our ancestors we burn sage or we burn sage and when we do burn sage we don't just burn sage we also brew like what we would call mkombo tea or african beer or Zulu beer as some as the Zulu nation has claimed it to be their own and also you need to slaughter something either a chicken or a goat or a cow in the Zulu culture a goat is a sacred animal so we do we as the Zulu people we do not eat goat in willy-nilly if we're going to eat goat there must be a purpose as to why the goat was slaughtered we believe that the goat is a direct link with our ancestors so there is no way on earth that i would eat a goat meat without knowing the purpose of why the goat was slaughtered and then the other animal that we also slaughter is a cow by the way guys i forgot to make a disclaimer that this video is going to be talking about slaughtery and also mutation at some point where now we will be dealing with bad practice of what i'm going to talk about so i apologize that i did not make that disclaimer so if you are going to be sensitive towards those terminologies do click away well, i'll see you in my next video so um like i said a cow is one of the animals that are very important in uh, are very important when it comes to our zulu our zulu cultural practices again guys i am so sorry that i'm going to be making reference of zulu instead of 
other cultures or other tribes that's because i don't want to misrepresent them and say things that the zulus do and yet they may not do so i don't want to offend anybody so please do bear with me with that when i keep saying zulu zulu and you you are south african and you're watching this video and you're like but no i'm please i apologize for that so anyways with the zulu culture a a cow is also a, a very important animal especially when a especially when the head of the house which is going to be the father of the household or the great or the grandfather passes on usually will slaughter that head of the house a cow and then we use the skin of the cow to cover their coffin and then it goes down into the grave with the skin of the cow covering the coffin some other zulu people they will basically cover their body with the skin of the cow and then descend it down into the grave so back in the day before colonialism what used to happen was if an elder dies usually it always was the elderly people that passed on the family will call a sangoma now i will explain to you what a sangoma is so they will call a sangoma and the sangoma will come and basically pave the way for the our for our elderly deceased and also command the and command his spirit or his soul to become a good lozi, meaning a good ancestor to the family. Meaning that when you become a good ancestor, that means you are an ancestor that does what the living ask of him or her when they go to God and say, you know what, my family, this is what they are requesting. And then that basically, uh, then maybe God grants that particular request in some other instances a lozi or an ancestor may not become a good one and in the zulu culture we will say the ancestor had turned their back on us irrespective of whatever we do whether we go to a sangoma or we go uh, or we do traditional do's like slaughter a goat slaughter a cow and a goat and we speak to them and sacrifice other animals and they still do not do anything that means the lozi is not a good one in most cases the reason why sometimes an ancestor does not become a good one is because of the way they used to be treated when they were alive so if you are going to mistreat your parents your elderly or your grandparents be rest assured that when they pass on they are not going to look after you so basically they hit you where it hurts the most so now i spoke of a sangoma a sangoma is what is termed unfortunately a witch doctor so the reason why it's called a witch doctor was what is because when the colonialists came to africa they came with three things they came with a gun politics they came with shakespeare education and they came with the bible which is christianity now if you know anything about colonialism back in the day it also brought into africa south africa once again came with missionaries and the sole purpose of missionaries was to convert Africans or South Africans from the cultural practices into Christianity. So when they saw the cultural practices of black people in South Africa, they were not happy with that. And hence they started, they started a campaign of discrediting these African practices, one of which was the, uh, the Sangomas. Because the Sangoma is almost like a pastor or a medium or a clairvoyant clairvoyance the people that interpret dreams uh also um there used to be psychologists and um <laughs> yeah psychologists because black people to this very day it's only now especially the new generation is the one that also that goes to the western psychologist if they have like a mental health issue but the older generation like the gen x and the generations before them they will go to a sangoma if they are having a mental health issue they will not go to a to a westernized uh, psychologist and lay on the sofa on a couch and tell them their problem 
usually they will go to a sangoma who will tell them the root of the mental health issue so when the missionaries saw that they started discrediting the whole practice of sangomas and they called them witch or oh, witches like witches witches of the east Week, for example and they will you and they will put the word doctor at the end so they will say witch doctors and as they were discrediting the practice of sangomas they also said that uh, they are evil demonic and things of that nature god does not like this god frowns upon practices of this nature and so as black people started to embrace christianity they also abandoned the cultural practices as a result however the tribe in south africa that continued to hold on to the zulu cultural practices are the zulu people to this very day it's very difficult to convince a zulu person to abandon their cultural practices i think in south africa we are the toughest to convert from our traditional practices into christianity even if uh, a zulu does become a christian they still practice the zulu culture now there is the other one called inyanga and inyanga is mostly a herbalist or a um a tradition or a traditional healer this person uses uh herbs uses leaves uses tree roots so they would use stuff from nature and concoct some sort of medicine depending on whatever ailment that you have they will put that together and they will give it to you they will firstly tell you that uh this is your ailment and this is what i'm going to do for you then they will blend those herbs and leaves and roots of trees and whatever else that they got from nature and they give it to you and they send you home and then you heal so even to this very day there are people who don't necessarily go to a western doctor they would rather go to an inyanga now an inyanga like i said it is a traditional healer or a herbalist who concoct these medicate these medicines so let's get to the topic of this video now muti muti now if i translate the word muti into english it basically means tree like a tree Remember, I said Inyanga uses leaves, uses roots, uses herbs. So those are what we call muti. Okay? That is what you call muti. And the purpose of muti is to heal the body. The purpose of muti is also to chase away any evil spirit that may have possessed a person in the house or the household that is bringing things that are not welcomed into the household that also includes being bewitched by somebody that may be jealous of you so inyanga is able to concoct muti in order to chase away those spirits they know when they go into the forest or go into the bushes or go by the riverside what to pick and concoct into something that is going to help the client now a sangoma does the same thing but there is something slightly different about a sangoma and inyanga a sangoma if you if you are going to consult a sangoma a sangoma is directly uh, linked with your ancestors it's like a medium so like in the western world you would have a medium now a medium they can talk or interact with the dead now a sangoma does exactly the same thing they are able to interact with your ancestors they are able to tell you that your ancestors are unhappy with one two three so let's say i have a dream my mom has passed so let's say I have a dream about my mom and in my dream, my mom says I'm feeling cold. So when, when I hear that, I would go to a Sangoma. I have not done that, never done it before. I would go to, a, I'm just giving an example. I would go to a Sangoma and say, you know what? I dreamt about my past, my mom who has passed on and she said she's feeling cold. Now the Sangoma knows what that means. So basically the Sangoma, whether it's a he or she, will then consult with my late mother who will tell the Sangoma to tell me that she needs a cow to be slaughtered or a goat to be slaughtered 
or a chicken to be slaughtered and usually they have their own type of chicken sometimes you they want a black chicken basically a chicken whose feather is black or a male chicken or a cock or a hen or both or and also when it comes to a cow whether it's a female or male or when it comes to a goat whether it's a female or male or both now once that and then the sangoma will tell me that okay your mom wants you to slaughter an animal and she wants you to use the skin of the animal as a mat somewhere in the house that way she will feel warm i'm just making an example i'm not saying that is what usually happens i think it does happen but i'm not sure but i've heard things like that have happened before uh, so another way that uh, you would consult a sangoma is every time you take something to drink and it, it falls like or spills and every time you pick up some beverage and it it spills then uh, some people will go and they will consult with the sangoma and the sangoma will tell them that actually your grandfather or your great grandfather whom you never met before is asking you to brew an African beer because they are thirsty so hence you keep spilling especially when it spills on the ground so it's a sign that they are thirsty and they want you to uh, uh to brew african beer and mkomboti as we call it in zulu <laughs> yeah the click <laughs> yeah there is that click mkomboti so they would want you to brew that and usually when you are going to brew mkomboti you will also have to slaughter an animal so in some in some zulu families they will slaughter a chicken that's the cheapest way of doing it the most expensive one is slaughtering a cow so many families whenever they consult a sangoma they pray it's nothing that is going to cost their arm in the leg so now let's go back to colonialism when the missionaries as well as the colonial masters realize that as they are coming into africa or south africa they're also coming with western medicine like doctors and nurses and as a result of that if if they would allow black people to continue using traditional healers and sangomas etc and so on that means the pharmaceutical companies are not going to make money from africans because they will be heavily reliant on sangomas as well as inyangas then they started concocting propaganda against sangomas and inyangas and muti so the colonialists then did they also did not like that and they realized that if they continued allowing these people to continue with their cultural practices they will virtually make no money and so they started discrediting the practices of uh, traditional healers as well as sangomas so now who can be a sangoma and who can be an inyanga now to be a sangoma it is a calling not any tom dick and harry can become a sangoma it needs to be a calling if you are not called to be a sangoma then you are going to be a fake sangoma which is the reason why Muti today is seen in a bad light because of people who professes to be Sangomas and yet it is not their calling. Then they started doing things that do not go with the practice of cultural practices or go with the principles of cultural practices. Now to be an Inyanga, it's an inheritance. So if your father or your mother was an Inyanga, they passed that practice down either to the first child or one of the children that seemed promising that they will carry on with this cultural practice. So to be a Sangoma, it must be a calling because if it's a calling, it means that you are legit and ancestors of your clients will, will of course interact with you but if it's not a calling, you would be lying to people and taking their money and also be robbing people of their hard earned money and sending them back home without actually telling them what is the problem. So now let's talk about the negative side of Muti. So the whole purpose of Muti is to do good, nothing but good, either to heal the sick 
or it is used to bring something that an ancestor had instructed a Sangoma to bring to that family. So if the family has been riddled with bad luck, they go to the Sangoma and then the ancestor will tell the Sangoma what the problem is and what to give the that family member. So the family member will either get Muti for luck, Muti to get a job, Muti to get rich, mu yeah, to get rich. Oh, depending on you, what you want from the Sangoma to do good, not evil. However, there were those Sangomas who became rogue Sangomas. They will say, if you want to be rich quick, you need to get me body parts of people, either an eye or a private part or an arm or kidney or something they would want from a human body. This is where now we are entering into the dark side of Muti, which was brought by rogue Sangomas. These are the Sangomas that were not called to be such, but they were trying, they are doing this because they want to charge their clients hundreds of thousands of rands, if not millions of rands. So they found a way to make money and themselves become very rich by telling a gullible or a desperate man or woman who wants to become wealthy to go and bring them a head of a child or go bring them a arm of a woman or bring them parts of an albino or something of that nature and that is when muti that is when also the colonialists were like you see you see we told you that muti is evil and as a result of that, many people turned their backs against Muti and they basically feared Muti. To this very day, when you talk of Muti, people, the first thing that comes to people's mind is that you are a witch. You go around bewitching people. So if I said to you, I don't go to hospitals, I go to a Sangoma. The moment I say that, people will stop trusting me altogether. They will think that I'm evil. They will think that I'm using Muti from Sangomas to do evil. They would, might even wonder how many people I have killed in order for me to be where I am in life. If I'm successful, how many people did I kill to be successful? And this is also one of the reasons why many black people turned against cultural practices and join Christianity. Helped by the rogue Sangomas and rogue Nyangas who would give people or tell people to bring them human body parts. So that is why you will get cases that I'm going to be bringing to your attention that has Muti murders. If you have watched such videos, you would hear Muti murders. So where a where you will find um, where you'll find the victim was either kidnapped, usually they are kidnapped, and then when their bodies were found, they have been mutilated. Now, from what I understand, in order for you to get rich, like super, super rich, you need to kill a human being and mutilate a part of their body that the Sangoma would have asked you to get for him in order for them to create some type of muti that is going to attract money. Some Sangomas will tell you that I need to create for you a person, like a zombie of some sort. Now, this zombie is called Iskova. Iskova, I think. Yeah, Iskova. So now, an Iskova is a half-dead person and half-alive person that a Sangoma would have done something to them. Usually, they will tell you to bring them an intelligent person, either an intelligent child or an intelligent woman or an intelligent man that's the person that would do that you as a client when you start using the muti on them you will send them to bring you money if you want contracts like big contracts you are able to send this cover to bring you that contract and basically you become a multi-millionaire or multi-billionaire or whatever you have whatever you asked from the sangoma you will get to me that is very scary and also something that needs to be eradicated because to this very day something like that does happen however recently 
there have been uh, people who would use snakes like pythons and other types of snakes to instead of using a human being they would use a snake that will bring them money there are a lot of youtube videos that you can watch where they talk about how a snake brought me money or how a snake made me rich check out those videos i'm not sure how true that is but uh it's something that has been done recently and uh, this is an alternative to killing a human being for their body parts then there is the other one called togoloshe i hear some people call it togoloshi it's not togoloshi it's togoloshe and this is like a very small or short type of animal slash human that is hairy and scary to this very day even myself if you're gonna talk to me about togoloshe i am i get terrified i think maybe it's indoctrinated into me that togoloshe they exist i remember one time when we were kids with my older brother uh, my mom had just finished doing her spring cleaning and she finished a little bit late i think the sun had just gone down and the curtains were still not put up yet so out of the blue my brother started pointing towards the window and he started screaming and he's like this thing is coming to me it's coming to me and we were all looking we're like what is it what is it I was scared but very curious at the same time i tried to look or find whatever it is that he was seeing that was on the window and i was like well, i don't see anything nobody saw anything the next day my mom literally went and brought a sangoma the sangoma then uh, told the family that uh, a togoloshe was sent to my brother because he the, the togoloshe wanted to kidnap his soul so that his soul would be used by somebody in the neighborhood who wanted to be rich unfortunately because apparently apparently i'm not sure how true this is my the sangoma told my mom that when we were babies now i'm about three years younger than my brother so when we were babies my grandmother who's late she had taken both my brother and i to a sangoma to strengthen us meaning that if anybody tried to send anything that might harm us it will fail so that's what the sangoma told my mom it's like oh your children are well protected your grand your mother had taken them to a sangoma to strengthen them and as a result that togoloshe failed to snatch uh, my brother's soul to be used by this particular person in the neighborhood now what i didn't like about that was the fact that the sangoma mentioned the name of this family and as a result of that that kind of like caused a rift between my family and that family and uh, basically there was complete hatred that that took place and i didn't like that but unfortunately it is what it is uh that's another negative thing about sangomas they will tell you who is doing what to you if you are riddled with bad luck they will tell you so and so has sent a has sent a togolosha or has sent a muti or bad muti or voodoo or juju or whatever it is that you call it or a spell to bring you nothing but bad luck and of course this is not going to sit well with you especially when you know who the enemy is most of the traditional healers as well as sangomas went to the government and said listen we are legit we are also a uh, part and parcel of community and we heal people and this is what we do we want to be recognized as a result the south african government they did recognize traditional healers as well as traditional doctors instead of calling them witch doctors it was changed to traditional doctors because that is what they used to be called before colonial times and uh, these people used to be very influential in communities each village used to have its own inyanga as well as its own sangoma now these days you will never know who is a real sangoma and who is a fake sangoma but as far as i'm concerned i am terrified to use either of them whether inyanga or a, a or a sangoma i'm very grateful that i'm also a person who has never slept in a hospital before who hardly ever gets sick 
when I caught that thing in twenty in, in April twenty twenty, um, that was my first time being sick in eleven years. The last time I was sick was eleven years before I caught that panoramic thing, which kind of like makes me wonder. Was my grandmother uh, correct when she said she strengthened us or what? I'm not sure. Oh, by the way, the strengthened thing is called in Zulu, Okinisa. Again, there's a click. So we were Okinisa, <laughs> and if you want to put it that way. And so I don't know how true all that. So when the government listened to the traditional doctors and healers, they created a law called the Traditional Health Practitioners Act. So basically, these people are considered as doctors as much as the Western doctors are. They enjoy the same thing as the Western doctors. Sometimes Western medical practice may not necessarily be able to heal me, so I will have to go to a traditional healer or a traditional doctor who will then diagnose me according to the African way of diagnosing and then use those mutis that I mentioned earlier on. I'm talking about the good muti. Use usually would be herbs and, and trees and plants and roots and things of that nature. And then boom, I'm back to normal again. That is what muti is in a nutshell. Oh, I also forgot to mention that muti, when we also say muti, we're talking about medicine. It could be cough mixture, it could be injection, it could be pills. I'm talking now the Western med medicine. It could be anything that is going to heal me. We call it muti. Anything that is going to heal me is called muti. Anything that is going to heal you is called muti. Anything that is going to bring bad luck to you, it is the bad muti where body parts were used to get money or get rich and uh, somebody had to die for that. That's bad muti. That is what has demonized the word muti. And uh, people today, when you say I use muti, like I said, they literally run away from you, unfortunately. But the irony of it is that if the same person that ran away from me because I said I use traditional muti, they, when they fall ill, they will go to the doctor and they will say, I want muti for my cough, or I want muti for my rash, or I want muti for my headache. That's the irony of it. So, um, like I said, muti is what, it's a tree a tree tree with branches that is what we call muti also muti is other plants that sangomas and traditional healers use to heal people i hope that answers your question however the videos that i'm going to be making about muti killing it is the bad muti part so if you are going to hear me talk about muti murders i'm talking about the bad muti and uh, those are the people that wants to be rich, people that wants to do evil things. That is not muti to do good. It's muti to do bad. So I hope I simplify this as simple as I could. If you don't understand, let's meet each other in the comment section and let me know which part you didn't get. Or if you have follow-up questions about this topic, let me know. Because I did do an academic research on this and I thought it's too complicated to put into a video. Rather, let me talk uh, the way I understand Muti also taking from other videos that I've watched about this topic, meaning there are Sangomas on YouTube that have YouTube channels. Uh, if you want to learn about Muti, you can go to their channels and learn about Muti. And uh, that's basically it. So this brings me to the end of this video about Muti, what it is and what was it used for or what is still used for and why it has been demonized. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you do not miss out on my true crime stories. And I will also highly appreciate it if you left me a comment down below. Please share this video far and wide and importantly guys, please give this video a thumbs up because it helps my channel with the algorithm 
and i will see you next time with a new true crime video goodbye